Hello, welcome back. Uh, so in my last video, I actually tested the um, Sterling engine for the first time. It just about ran, um, but perhaps wasn't going quite as good as it, it could have done. Um, so what I've done is I've actually made a few changes to things. Um, so I'll take you through that in a second. Um, I made the changes because um, it, even though it was running, it wasn't really perhaps running as well as it could could be really. Um, a lot of people uh, mentioned various things. So I've, I've made a few changes. Um, so I'll take you through those right now. So there we go. A bit of a different beast compared to last time. So what I've done is I've actually turned the whole engine sideways and mounted it on this trolley that I've made. Um, the reason for doing that is uh well one of the reasons is the furnace um it was on its side but it wasn't particularly effective i don't think um because i think all the hot gases were mostly bypassing uh the heat exchanger so i'll just show you the what the furnace looks like now so as you can i've turned it all sideways i've made another door in this idea if i can open it i've just painted it so it's a bit hmm, glued shut i think <coughs> There we go. Um, um, so it's still insulated. So I've got a door. Um, I've got the grate in the bottom right there. I've still kept the original door, which is underneath there. Um, and now that's the ash uh, pan and the, the air controls on the bottom as well. Um, this will probably realistically run better on coal. I'll try it on wood. Um, but with the air coming from beneath like this, it's a bit of a compromise really because I've just sort of, um, the engine has evolved and it's just kind of ended up this way really. Um, it's the engine sort of gone away from a an attack on a practical uh, engine to more, more of an exhibit now I would say. Um, the chimney is now twice as tall as it was before to make sure we create a nice draft for the fire. So all those hot gases go up through the heat exchanger. Um, I've got a pressure gauge on here. I was hoping to make a proper block and bleed kind of thing. So you get an exact pressure, um, but I don't actually have any spare fittings at the moment. So I'm going to have to order some of those up. Um, I've got the stop valve there. Open it up and all, all the air comes out. Um, and beneath that, I've got a one-way valve as a snifter valve to let air in, but not let air out. Um, so other changes, I've also added a, um, a big flywheel, um, I'm quite happy with this actually, um, this flywheel is actually made out of concrete, and what I've done is, I've got two um, disc laser cut, um, I've bolted them together at the right spacing with some uh, M6 bolts, uh, I've welded a rim around the outside, like so. Um, as I've been welding it, I've been quite sympathetic to try and uh, make sure that the welds pulled the wheel straight. So it's, it's fairly straight, which I'm quite happy with. And um, once I've done all that, I welded the shaft in the middle. Again, it's welded on, nothing, nothing fancy, just welded straight on. Um, I turned it sideways and filled the whole lot with cement and sand. Um, I started with self-leveling uh, compound. But a whole 20 kilogram bag went into that and it still hadn't filled filled the void up. So um, then I turned to some cement and sand that I had kicking around to finish it off. So there you go. So that's that. Uh, I think that's all the changes I've made. Um, I've made a handle there so I can carry, carry the thing around it. It moves around quite easily because it's all on the balance. I'll just lift it up there with one hand. I can I can pull it around, which is ideal. Right, so uh, so it's time to give it a go. So there you go. That's the changes I've made so far. So I'm going to give it a, a test try a second. Um, so this will be the first time I've put a fire in it in, in this uh, configuration at the moment. Two more things I forgot to mention. One of those was the regenerator material um, hasn't been changed. I'm still using uh, stainless steel scouring pads. So we'll see what happens there. Um, and the other thing I haven't changed is the compression ratio. Um, this will probably need to be dropped, um, but I'm gonna run it and see if we can hopefully measure the pressure and uh, go from there.
Right, so it started off running well, but now it is running less well. So let's try and investigate to find out what's going on. Now the water coming out of it is cold. See, so this is the water coming out of this pipe here. And it goes through there, so it goes up through the bottom and out through the top. And that's nice and cold, so that would be probably about 12 degrees, which is ground ground water temperature. The only problem is this is getting quite warm. Now underneath, Maya, quiet with you. So this is quite warm here. And that must be a good 50 degrees. Underneath it's even warmer. Um, I think the heat is conducting off the furnace below it. So may maybe that's some of our problem. Possibly. Um, I can't get the pressure for the moment. Um, I'll try and run it a second to give us some kind of pressure reading. Um, I'll just open the valve. So that's the valve to vent the engines to technically stop it. So I should probably turn over. It's fairly free to move. Really, I need to get it running for a decent amount of time so it can sort itself out. But it, it, it's fairly free to move. I'm a bit worried that the... Um, the support rings are made out of epoxy are actually gripping and i was hoping just to run it for a period of time just to just to loosen everything up really um things are fairly warm here um for that poor little leather seal one leaf here now what i'm wondering is whether i need to actually create a little smaller water jacket here just to keep the temperatures down a little bit for that leather seal um even insulation perhaps to just to protect this it might be this tube's getting heat, heated up by the furnace down there below it just through uh uh, just like radiant heat, possibly. I'll try and start it up again in a minute. So I'll close that. I just want to spin it with try and get it. Oh, a, <laughs> a bit, bit tricky on my own. Even with the big leverage and the big weight of this wheel. There we go. Just quickly get a reading. Right. So it's almost one bar we're seeing there. So that's actually one to two compression, one to two, which is quite high really for a Sterling engine of this type. The other strange thing is this one way valve doesn't seem to be one way, it seems to be uh, letting air out as well, so we're going to have to solve that problem as well. There you go. Actually, it's a bit more than uh, one bar. I reckon that's about 1.4 bar, actually. At this point in time, maybe even 1.5, which is pretty high compression, really. Yeah, that's quite high. I mean, that's either two times compression. And there we go. Slowly but surely comes to a stop. So I think I'm going to let the fire burn out today. Um, I think I could get it running. Um, what that would involve is taking out the one-way valve and putting a plug in it. Um, and then it can't actually suck quite as much air in. So you're actually kind of reducing the compression to some extent, which I suspect would also work. So, um, yeah, there you go. Let's see what the fire looks like. I'm going to have to loosen that hand off a bit. Yeah, so I think, I think I'll just leave the fire burn itself out at this point in time. So there you go. Your thoughts and opinions, please. <laughs> so if anybody's got any uh, thoughts or opinions about this, uh, I'm always, because it's always nice to get lots of people involved to solve a problem. 
All right, so there you go. That's uh, not a bad um, start for the project or the uh, mod modified project. Um, obviously, it's turned into a bit more of a um, an antique en looking engine now and more of an exhibit than an, uh, than an actual um, a practical challenge on trying to create a usable usable Sterling engine um, that you could have in your home or, or yard. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, your thoughts and opinions always always welcome, and um, I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.